Hi Hope Kids and JM friends. Um, I hope everyone is doing well. Um, since we can't meet on Sunday um, at church, we are going to have our own Hope Kids and JM worship time. And you can do this um, on Sundays or you hopefully you are watching this video throughout the week multiple times. If so, um, it's all up to you and your family. Um, so today I'm going to share a story from um, this book. It's called God's Plan in Action, The Early Church. So in April, we're going to talk about what happened after Jesus died and rose again from the dead. Now, I know that the second Sunday in April is actually Easter Sunday, where we celebrate Jesus's resurrection. Um, but I'm going to start with that story today. So throughout the month, I can share with you um, other things that happened, amazing things that happened um, after Jesus's resurrection. So um, I'm going to start with the word up this week, which is Jesus is alive. So can you really know that that is true? Um, or how can we know for sure? So we're going to look for proof, for evidence throughout this story and the news um, so that you can believe it. So every time I say Jesus is alive, I'm going to hold up, um, show you this card. And I want you to jump up as fast as you can and shout, Jesus is alive. All right, so let's practice. Ready? One, two, three. Jesus is alive. <laughs> so I hope you can jump right up from your seat and then sit back down to hear the rest of the story. So before I begin the sermon message, I'm going to pray for all of us. So I want you to close your eyes, bow your heads, hands together, um, and join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time. Um, we thank you for technology that we may still worship you and learn more about you, even um, from our homes, Lord. I pray for just for this um, disease to be erased, Lord. I pray for all the friends and family um, who may be sick or who's at home, Lord. I pray that you are with us um, and that we just love you. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so if you already know the story, so you know that Jesus was crucified, he died on the cross, and he um, was taken to a tomb. So now at this point, the disciples were very shocked and they were afraid and they were really, really sad. They thought Jesus was God's promised savior. So how could he be dead? Wasn't he the one who was going to save all of us or save them? And how could he save us if he is dead? So for three years, the 12 disciples had followed Jesus, you know, listening to him and learning from him. And Jesus told them that he was the savior God had promised to send. He even told them that he would die and come back to life. So Jesus already told the disciples what was to come. But the disciples didn't understand. Listen carefully for the proof so, um, the, the pieces of evidence that Jesus really did what he said he would come to do. Um, so most of the disciples believed Jesus was who he said he was. But many of other religious leaders and government leaders at the time did not believe what Jesus was saying. In fact, these leaders um, planned to kill Jesus because they hated him. They held an unfair trial and falsely accused him of being a criminal. So even though he had done nothing wrong, Jesus was nailed to a cross and he died. And why did Jesus have to die? And you know, he died for you and for me. God loves us so much that he wants to have a relationship with us. But because of sin, um, we are separated from God because God is holy. He's perfect. He can't be around sin. And because we're sinners, we can't be close to God and have a relationship with him. So God sent Jesus, his only son, to us so that he may take our sins away and die for our sins so that we can come closer to God and have that relationship with God. So in Isaiah 53, 6, it says, We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Jesus lived a perfect and sinless life. So he was the perfect man. Um, he allowed the leaders at the time to nail him to a cross and kill, kill him, 
Even though he didn't do anything wrong, Jesus was innocent. In Colossians 1, chapter 1, verse 14, it says, In whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. Jesus made it possible for your sin and my sin to be forgiven when he suffered, he bled, and he died on the cross. So you can, we can have eternal life with him in heaven. Only Jesus could do that because he never sinned. Jesus came to take the punishment for our sin, for yours and mine. And that is why Jesus had to die. Jesus' closest friends, his disciples, and others who believed in him, they were in shock. They thought he was the promised savior of God, that God, who God sent, but now he was dead. And they were wondering what to do, what would happen next. So some followers of Jesus buried his tomb in a body, which is like a cave. Um, and they put a huge stone in front of the opening of the cave because Jesus' enemies thought he, they, they even knew that he would um, rise again on the third day. But the, and they, they asked the governor to take a place a guard in front of the tomb so Jesus' friends would not steal his body um, and to say that he had like risen from the dead. The governor made sure no one could steal the body. So then the disciples were really, really sad. So early on the morning, the third day after Jesus died, two women who were his followers came to Jesus' tomb. But suddenly there was a great earth shake. An angel from heaven came and rolled the stone from the, the, from the opening and sat on top of it. The Bible says the angel's appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The men guarding the tomb fainted and looked like they were dead. The women were very afraid, but the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, he has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. The angel told the woman to not be afraid. Jesus has risen. Jesus is alive. The angel reminded them that Jesus told them he would rise again. This is called resurrection. Say resurrection with me. Resurrection. That means Jesus came alive from the dead. Wait, that sounds like our first proof. So proof number one, Jesus is alive. Jesus knew what would happen before it happened because he is the son of God. He came alive again, just as he said he would. The angel told a woman, um, who actually Mary in the Bible, if you read chapter uh, Matthew chapter 28 and Luke chapter 24, um, uh, the woman <laughs> were Mary Magdalene and then the other Mary. And even in Luke, um, they talk about a third woman named Joanna. So the woman um, couldn't keep such great news to themselves. They ran to tell their friends what had happened, that the tomb was empty, no body, no bones, just an empty burial cloth left where Jesus' body once had laid. And that's the second proof. Proof number two. The same day, two of Jesus' followers were traveling to a town called Emmaus. They were talking about all that had happened. Could it be true? Could it be true that Jesus is alive? And while they were talking, a stranger walked with them. And the stranger said, what are you talking about? They were surprised. You must be the only person who hasn't heard all that's happened. They told them Jesus had died, but the net, that morning, um, some woman reported that Jesus was actually alive. It was all so confusing. Then the stranger started talking to them about things that were written hundreds of years before. He started way back in the Old Testament part of the Bible. The Old Testament also said the Savior would die and rise again. How could this stranger know all of this information? Well, let's read Luke chapter 24, verse 15 and 16. As they walked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. So the stranger was actually Jesus. Say it with me, Jesus is alive. Later in the day, they invited the stranger to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were open and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight. 
these two followers realized that it was Jesus himself who was actually with them. So proof number three is in the Old Testament, it said that Savior would die and rise again. So eventually, all of Jesus' closest followers, his disciples, saw Jesus alive in person. They not only saw him, but they ate with him and touched him. And he, so he was truly alive. Later, many more people saw Jesus alive. If just one or two people said they saw him, some people might think that they were lying or they were imagining things or making things up. But the Bible says over 500 people saw Jesus at the same time. All those people couldn't be lying or seeing things. Number four, there were hundreds of eyewitnesses. The hundreds of eyewitnesses who saw Jesus alive are, is a big evidence that he really did come alive again. Stay with me. Jesus is alive. If you believe in Jesus as your savior, maybe you have friends who don't believe Jesus is alive. You know, um, they may tell you that Jesus was a good man, but he actually is not God. And some people believe that. Some people believe that his body was taken and that Jesus wasn't actually the son of God. Um, some people might not even heard who Jesus is or even the name Jesus. It is up to us who, um, where when you know we learn about these Bible stories to go out and tell people in the neighborhood, to tell friends in the, on the playground, tell our relatives, our cousins even, who might not know about Jesus and tell them what you just heard. That's so important. Because in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 and 4, it says, For what I received, I pass on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for us for our, sin, for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures. Let's say all of our four proofs again. Proof number one. Jesus said he would come alive again. Proof number two, the tomb was empty. Proof number three, the Old Testament said the Savior would die and rise again. And proof number four, there were hundreds of eyewitnesses, 500 to be exact. 40 days after Jesus' resurrection, after, after hundreds of people had seen him alive, Jesus led his disciples out to a town called Bethany and reminded them that he was sent a helper. The helper is God, the Holy Spirit. Jesus gave them another promise. He told them that the Holy Spirit would give them power and they should tell everyone in the whole world the good news about Jesus. What's one of the things they could tell? Say it with me. Jesus is alive. Then something else amazing happened. His disciples stared at Jesus' feet, left the ground, and he began to going, began going up in the air, higher and higher, until he finally disappeared into a cloud. While the disciples were looking up into the sky, two angels came and said, Why are you standing around looking at the sky? Jesus, who went back to heaven, will be coming back in the same way he went. Just as Jesus said, he would rise from the dead, he also promised he will come back someday to take those who have believed in him to be with him forever. Our bodies will be resurrected and we will live forever in heaven with Jesus. Jesus' resurrection is the best news ever. If you believe in Jesus as your savior, you can know for sure that Jesus is alive. Remember our memory verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3. 3 and 4. Jesus told his disciples the good news that he was coming back someday. After Jesus went back into heaven, the disciples did what Jesus had asked them to do and went to Jerusalem to wait for the helper. What would the helper be like? What would he help them with? We'll talk about that next time. Thank you for listening.